Are you as addicted to diving as I am and want to get into underwater photography or video? Or maybe you just want to immortalize your next epic scuba adventure and just don't know where to start. Well, look no further because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what are the best scuba diving cameras for beginners in 2020. So let's get going. Hmm? Critter Hunter. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I am Justin from Critter Hunter. And normally I film underwater creatures and cool stuff around the globe, uh, mainly here in Philippines during lockdown. But I get a lot of questions about what cameras I use, what are the cheapest cameras, and mainly what I'm addressing in this video, what cameras are good for beginners or entry level cameras. So let's get started with that. If you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button as well as that bell and you're not going to miss any videos. All right, so let's go. Number five. So number five, I gotta go with GoPro. And the newest GoPro happens to be the Hero 8 Black. And this, this is kind of a great little camera for entry level underwater photographers and video. Uh, and I think it really stands out for video in particular. I actually tend to have a love-hate relationship with GoPro. Uh, I don't use it as my main camera, but I always have one, at least one with me, and I can film wide angle while, you know, I'm filming some macro. Like if I'm filming a little crab over here and a whale shark goes by, I'm super happy to have it. <laughs> um, so while it's not my main camera anymore, it's an awesome camera to start out with, to learn underwater videography. And I always say, if you can get good with the GoPro, even though GoPros are super high quality nowadays, you can probably get good with anything. Because as any photographer knows, well, videographer I should say, uh, GoPros are so tiny that it's really hard to get a steady shot. Even if you get a big tray and all that stuff, I, I always found it really hard to get a steady shot where you're not shaking at all. And well, GoPro 8 actually has a really good stabilizer in it. I mean, you can run and it'll look smooth. So maybe that problem is gone now. But yeah, GoPro, it's super good. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper than it used to be. They used to come out really expensive. But now you can get a Hero 8 for like three or four hundred dollars. You're definitely going to buy, you're definitely going to need a housing and a red filter so keep that in mind number four so for number four i got the sea life macro 2.0 so of course sea life offers a bigger camera and it's not sealed you, it comes with the housing and everything and it's called the dc 2000 or something like that and i was thinking about which one i was gonna talk about in this video but I like the macro or the micro yeah micro uh, they make a great camera it's permanently sealed so a lot less maintenance uh, it's not gonna ever leak you don't have to grease or clean seals or anything like that and it's a real good camera there's not a lot of settings to learn so since we're talking about cameras for beginners or people that want to learn how to do video or photos uh, this is a great little camera. It's not too ultra expensive. Maybe around the same as a GoPro, but it has a little more options. I mean, this thing is built for underwater. Uh, and the good thing about Sea Life is it also comes with basically all the accessories you need. You don't have to go to the aftermarket uh, unless you want to. They have macro lenses, wide lenses that hook to their own housing. They have trays. They make handles, video lights, strobes, everything you can think of. So it's a great little camera. The cons are, you know, not a lot of manual settings, but we're, we're, we're talking about beginners and beginners just want some push button action, you know, learn video while you're improving your buoyancy, all that kind of stuff. So it's a great little camera. Number three. So number three, I gotta go with the Olympus TG6. Or more specifically, I think it's called the Olympus Tough TG6. 
And this camera is amazing. You guys didn't think I was gonna forget it, did you? I'll probably mention this camera in other videos. I mean, it is a great little camp compact camera. I love this camera. It's not ultra expensive. It's super rugged. You can drop it on the ground. It's not gonna break. Even without the housing, it's supposed to go up to about five meters. But you divers, you're gonna need a housing. It's not all that expensive. For under a thousand dollars, maybe even around seven hundred dollars, you'll get the camera, you'll get the housing, uh, and then you can get trays, lights, whatever you want. I really love this camera for a compact, like entry level compact camera. What I really love, even more than the cameras that I use on the daily basis, is the microscope mode. This thing is insane. You get you can film tiny, tiny macro critters just with this microscope mode without a wet lens or anything. So imagine if you can add a plus 10 or a plus 20 wet lens. Uh, imagine the tiny creatures you can get. In all the forums, there's so many photos and videos from the Olympus Tough TG6 and the TG5. Uh, they're just so good and they're so easy to use. You know, a little more settings, manual settings and usability compared to the Sea Life camera and the GoPro. Um, it's not just a point and shoot. You can you can do a lot of white balance settings, stuff like that. But I think where it really shines, besides its rugged durability, is that microscope mode. You're not gonna get an out of camera or out of box camera with such an awesome macro capability. Number two. So for number two, I have to go, of course, with Sony's flagship compact camera, the RX100. And this, I think now is Mark 7. So this camera is insane. It's by far the Sony's best compact and for good reason. And not only does it get incredible footage and photos, uh, every aftermarket camera company on the planet makes accessories for these. So you can get ultra high quality housings from Nauticam, CNC, you name it. Basically every company makes the housings for them. Then of course you can get the trays, handles, lights, everything to make this uh, basically almost professional level camera. But it's still a point and shoot compact camera where it's it's a really good one to learn if you're just beginning underwater videography or photos. It really shines on video, just like probably all the cameras on this video, on this list. Um, and the only reason this isn't my all time favorite camera and number one is, is the price point. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure the most expensive compact camera in the world right now it's it's like eleven hundred dollars without a housing and the housing is going to set you back uh, for a for a nauticam twelve hundred dollars so if you have the money or you're a hardcore sony fan and have to stick with sony compared to canon which is my number one pick then go for it if you got the money it's amazing you're not going to be you're not going to be sad i know a lot of amazing pro video and photo photographers that use the rx100 so yeah if you have the money and you just want to skip the gopro or the sea life stage and get straight to a little bit more advanced but still entry level compact camera you can go for the sony and you're not going to be sad number one so last but not least number one on my list is of course my canon g7x mark ii uh yeah, notice I didn't say Mark III because I don't have it yet, um, but I guarantee you it's just as good. Uh, do I want to upgrade and with that, is there a huge difference from the two to the three? Uh, do I want to spend that money? I don't think so. I mean, I was dead set on G7X1. I love that thing. It was amazing. It didn't fail me for how many hundreds and hundreds of dives. I rode that thing until the wheels fell off i loved it the only problem is just like the sony when you go to upgrade to the mark ii mark iii you have to get a new housing so it can be ultra expensive 
but one thing I love is that it's it's less than half the price. Actually, it's probably a third the price than the new Sony RX100, the closest competitor. So you're either in the Canon club or you're in the Sony club for compacts, and so you're either gonna get an RX100 or a G7X. And, and I, I've used them on the same dive and compared the video and it's just, they're so similar. On paper, I get people arguing with me all the time. On paper, the RX100 should be better. It sh it's got better stats, better everything. It should be better. But to be honest, man, with what I do with the macro creators, playing with the white balance presets, setting those at different depths, uh, and using some pretty big macro wet lenses, I have to go with the Canon. Uh, there's always a problem with uh, focus when you're on these big uh, macro wet lenses and it can be hard to focus it takes some time but it take it, it was so much easier with the canon i mean right now i am nitpicking little tiny details because i love both cameras um so it's hard to compare but in the end the price point did not justify being three times more expensive i could get a brand well i could get a g7x2 for maybe 400 dollars uh, the housing, maybe five, six hundred dollars for a nice one, uh, and the G7X3, not much more expensive, maybe seven hundred dollars for a new one. So even the nicest one is half the price of the Sony, and it's it's at least as good as better or better uh, in my opinion. But just like the Sony, every housing company makes a housing for it. You can get accessories forever. Um, it's a super popular camera. So if you are not in the can in the Sony um, Family and you're not too particular You might as well get the G7X in my opinion. I love this camera. I swear it's built for underwater You can still be a beginner and learn it um, It's not as point-and-shoot as a GoPro of course where you just kind of point uh, There's a lot of manual set. You it still has automatic settings automatic white belts all that if you want but you can really learn some incredible, incredible underwater videography and photos probably on the G7X. So you don't have to be a pro, it's still entry level, but you can get super good. In fact, 99% of the videos on my channel are from my G7X 2 or 1 maybe, including the entire documentary I did. You can watch it now. Uh, about scuba diving in the Philippines where I went all over the country and uh, made a documentary. I think it's like an hour long. It was all done, except for the drone and stuff. It was all done on the cannon. So, not only is it awesome, it's compared to a DSLR or mirrorless, it's way cheap. Uh, and it's still, it's still good for entry level beginner underwater video and photo people. So, yeah, I highly recommend this, but you can't really go wrong with any of the cameras on this video. So so there you have it, guys. Let me know what you think. If you're in the Sony uh, family, let's let's have a discussion. Uh, I'd love to I'd love to do a full review, go out diving with the new RX100, do a full review on that and maybe change my mind. I don't know. I mean, in all the forums, there's some insane videos coming from these Sonys and the Canons, but am I justified? What do you guys think? Am I justified in being in the G7X family? Let me know. Uh, until then, thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah. Subscribe.